What's up everybody, this is Derek Rogers with another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. And today we're going to be looking at a leveling guide for monocolored planeswalkers. This is going to be the first part series to a three part series video. And it's something that I have put together with alongside help from a lot of different players and a lot of different people. Uh, including some of my own coalition mates from Gods of Theros and a bunch of players inside the Power 9 Alliance and also some help from the guys that keep track of the wiki. And is what I've done is put this together is because this question comes up a lot. What Planeswalker is best to spend my mana runes on? This is a topic that everyone is going to have different opinions on and I have put this together to show you how to play this game in a different way. And another reason I have done it is so that way if you have been saving up with a bunch of mana runes you can come here and see how to disperse them properly or if you wanted to level up 1 to 60 which one is best if you wanted to keep some more even you could also do that as well and that's the point of this video and another reason i have done this is so that way you can this will show you what to focus your mana runes on let's say you've been saving up and you have 80,000 mana runes but you're not sure which planeswalker to sink them into and this is kind of an idea of which planeswalker works at what level until you can get them up to level 60. So as what I have done is put this chart together. It also has a small tier list as well being that the green tier, tier 1, is the top tier that, that I consider or must have walkers and then tier 2 is just a slight step down from that which are you know you should definitely pick up as soon as you're able to and then tier three i kind of have they're kind of more of a fun planeswalker that if you have the extra gold and you can you can spend on it then go ahead but they're not important to have and then tier four is something that i just don't consider any type of use so with that being said let's jump right on in the first one we have a johnny adversary of tyrants also known as aj3 and i have him best level to play at level 36 and the main reason of that is because at level 36 his first ability becomes level three and it is your first and second creature gets plus three plus three I don't think it's super important that you have it at level 4, which the only difference is it only gives an extra plus 1 buff, meaning that your first and second creatures get plus 4, plus 4. I think it can completely survive at plus 3, plus 3, but you also don't want to have it lower at level 35 where it's where only your first creature is getting plus 3, plus 3. At this level, he will have 75 health, and his abilities, just like I said, will be his first will be level 3, his second will be level 2, and his third will be level two as well. And this will cost about 28,325 mana runes. And his bon mana bonuses at this level are plus three to white, minus one to blue, minus one to black, plus one to red, and plus three to green. Next up, we have Elspeth Sun's Champion, also known as Elspeth One. And I have her down for the best level of play at level 38 and the main reason i have this at level 38 is because of this is when she gets her white mana bonus becomes plus six at level 37 she only has a plus five on white so that's why i think it's more important to go up two more levels and get that plus six on white at this level she has 84 health and her first ability will be level two which is summon a 2-2 soldier token with exert six the first creature your opponent controls is destroyed and then her second ability will be activate two each of your creatures gain plus two plus two and then her third ability is destroy two of your activated gems and this will cost about 25,655 mana runes and then her mana bonuses are plus six to white plus two to blue and then minus two to black and then minus two to red and then plus two on green as well next up we have garuk three garuk unleashed and i have him down at level 38 and his health will be 88 
his first level will be level three. Target creature you control gets plus six, plus six, and gains trample until end of turn. Then if that creature's base power is five or greater, you draw a card. And then his second will be level two. Your first non-token creature gains leader. Beast create two beast tokens. And then his third ability is also level two, which is create a predator's trail token with a four shield count at the end of your turn pick one of the first three different creature cards from your library move that card to play under your control morbid then your creatures get plus one plus one he this will cost somewhere around twenty five thousand six hundred and fifty five mana runes and his mana bonuses are minus two to white minus three to blue plus three to black plus three to red and plus four to green up next we have gideon blackblade also known as Gideon 4, and I have him down for level 46 for best to play. And the reason I have that is because at level 46, his third ability becomes level 3. So his health will be 98, and all three of his abilities will be level 3. So if we go take a look at his abilities, at level 3, you get the first one, Target creature you control gets plus 3, plus 0, and gains first strike, lifelink, and vigilance until the beginning of your next turn. And then his second ability at level 3 is exile an opposing vanguard support, if you can't exile an opposing enchantment support. And then his third ability is create a Gideon Blackblade white 6-6 human soldier with legendary first strike, lifelink, berserker, and while this creature is on the battlefield, if it's not disabled, your Planeswalker gains prevent damage. When this creature dies, exile the first and last opposing creatures. And I have him at such a higher tier, because I think for newer players, with that third ability giving your Planeswalker prevent damage, Gideon 4 will cost 37,075 mana runes to get him to level 46. His mana bonuses are plus 4 to white, plus 2 to blue, Minus 3 to black, plus 3 to red, and 0 on green. Next up, we have Gideon of the Trials, also known as Gideon 3. He is probably my favorite of the Gideons because of his fourth ability alone. I believe that he should be best played at level 60, and that is because of that third ability really makes a big difference with this guy all you got to do is exile the creatures out of your hand and then with that third ability you can bring them back so at level 60 he will have 115 health his first everything will be level four so if we go take a look down here first ability at level four will summon four one one initiative oketra tokens with reach and then his second ability target creature you control is exiled each other creature you control gains plus x plus y where x is the creature's power plus three and why is the exiles creatures toughness plus three and the ability that really makes this guy stand out is the third ability the last three creatures that were exiled are returned to the battlefield and at level 60 it's going to cost you 79,920 mana runes to level him all the way up his mana bonuses are fairly solid with plus five to white and then his blue black and red are all at zero so no negative mana gains and then he gets plus four to green as well next up we have jace unraveler of secrets and he too is best played at level 60 because of his third ability the ultimate uh he has health at 104 and if we go take a look at his abilities at level 4, they are gain 4 mana per support you control on the board. The second ability at level 4 is discard 1 card and then investigate 4. And his third ability is create a support with... When, when you draw a card, each of your creatures gain plus 4, plus 4. And that's what makes him so great is because if you can put a deck together that is a lot of draw power, your creatures will just get huge very very quickly and once again at level 60 it's going to cost 79,920 mana runes and he also has a really solid mana bonus at uh, 0 for white so no negative plus 5 to blue and then plus 4 to black and then both red and green are also 0 so also no negatives as well next up we have Jaya Ballard 
and I have her at best level to play at 46. And the main reason for that is because at level 46, her third ability becomes level 3. And that's where she really starts shining as well. At level 46, she's going to have a health at 90. And all three of her abilities will be at level 3. So if we go take a look at her abilities, at level 3, her first will fetch the first spell in your library. The first spell in your hand gains 8 mana. The second ability at level 3 is if the last card in your hand is a spell deal 8 damage to your opponent discard a card draw 4 cards and then the third ability at level 3 is create an improved professional destruction token with a shield count of 4 whenever you cast a non copy spell the first spell from your library it gains full mana Jaya Ballard at level 46 will cost 37,075 mana runes to level and her mana bonuses will be minus one to white plus four to blue zero on black plus five to red and minus one to green next up we got koth of the hammer i believe that he is a planeswalker that should only be played at level 60 because that's just where he shines the most and at level 60 he will have a health of 111 and of course all of his abilities will be maxed to the fullest level and he will cost 79,920 mana runes and then his bonuses are very weak unless you're hitting at on red so he gets minus one to white minus one to blue zero to black plus nine to red and then he gets zero to green all right up next we have Liliana's Death Majesty, also known as Liliana 3. She is by far my favorite Liliana because of her first ability alone. She can survive at level 36 with 88 health. And if we go take a look at her abilities, uh, they will all be level 2. And the first ability is... Target creature you control is destroyed. It gains the zombie subtype, then it is returned to the battlefield and gains plus one, plus one. This is my favorite ability right here because you can choose a lot of great enter the battlefield creatures and you can just keep resurrecting them. It, you know, even, and it also gives you a little bit of control. Like if you're a newer player and then you're running Fleshbag Marauder, that's a double creature kill with that and also it goes with this with the second ability which is the last zombie you controlled that was destroyed is returned to the battlefield and gets plus two plus two and then the third ability at level was it level two is create a token support when a zombie enters the battlefield your opponent takes two damage the support does not reinforce that's actually a good thing that um that this doesn't reinforce because that means it doesn't stack on top of each other so you could just keep summoning this third ability and then every time that you summon a zombie you could get this hitting really really high i mean you could get if you got three of them out you're hitting for six damage each time that you summon a zombie so that's something that a lot of people overlook and they don't even realize it liliana 3 at level 36 will cost twenty three thousand. 115 mana runes to level and her mana bonuses will be minus three to white plus four to blue plus five to black plus two to red and minus two to green up next we have liliana dreadhorde general also known as liliana five and i have her up here because she has two abilities that can destroy creatures and for newer players that could be really really important I find her best to play at level 40, where she will have a health of 86. And her first ability will be level 3, which if we go take a look at that... So her first ability at level 3 is Created Feast on Suffering, which is a black enchantment with 3 shield. And whenever a creature or vanguard support you control is destroyed, draw a card, and then you're also going to amass 3. She would be a top tier walker if it wasn't for the amass on top of that. I just, that was a very weak mechanic that came out when it did. And then her second ability at level three is destroy the first opposing creature. Your first reinforced creature loses a reinforcement. So right there is non-targeting removal, 
which will help any player, let alone a newer player. And then her third ability at level 2 is destroy the first and last opposing creatures. So now you're destroying two creatures, then amass two for each of those creatures' reinforcements. Once again, the amass part, not super important. What is important is at level 40, with her third ability, she can destroy up to two creatures. She will cost 28,325 mana runes to level. Her mana bonuses will be zero on white, plus one to blue, plus four to black, plus three to red, and minus three to green. Up next, we have Liliana Untouched by Death, also known as Liliana 4. I have her best down to play at level 46, because at level 46, that third ability becomes level 3. At level 46, she will have a health of 84. So if we go take a look at her abilities at level 3, the first one will be destroy the top 6 cards of your library. Your opponent loses 1 life for each zombie destroyed that way. Her second ability at level 3 is target creature gets minus 2, minus 2 for each zombie and zombie reinforcement you control up to minus 8, minus 8. And then the third ability at level 3 is return the first three zombie cards hand costing 8. I don't think that one is really all that important, but... She could definitely has a lot of graveyard activity, and with the current standard, there's just so much so much stuff you can do with the graveyard which is why I have her at the second tier and at level 46 she will cost 37,075 mana runes and then her mana bonuses will be minus 2 to white plus 3 to blue plus 5 to black plus 2 to red and minus 2 to green up next we have Nisa 4 also known as Nisa World Waker. Uh, best level to play I have at level 60. And at level 60 she will have 113 health. All of her abilities will be level 4. Let's go take a look at those. And they will be... The first ability at level 4 is create 4 forest tokens. And then convert 6 gems to green. Which is the main reason why she is not any any better at a lower level is because you need those those six gems to, to convert that's where she thrives the most and then her second ability at level 60 will draw two cards and then all cards in your hand gain awaken create two forest tokens and then create a world wake token with a four shield and landfall your creatures get plus one plus one until end of turn and then finally, her third ability at level 60 is create four Ashea the Woken world tokens, which are 2 2 haste trample with leader elemental. While this creature is reinforced six or more times, it gains regenerate two. While this creature is reinforced 12 or more times, it gains hexproof. Nisa 4 will cost 79,920 mana runes to level. Her mana bonuses will be plus three to white plus one to blue, minus one to black, plus two to red, and plus four to green. Probably by far the best mono green walker in the game right now. Up next we have Obnixilis Reignited. He is, especially for a newer player, the best planeswalker that you can play creature list. Uh, he is what I recommend. He is best played at level 60 because of that third ability being level 4, and that's what's going to help kill your opponent the quickest. At level 60, he has a health of 119, and then his abilities as follows with level 4. They are the first is lose one life and draw two cards. The second is lose three life and destroy target creature. And the third ability, the most important one at level 4, is create a support 5 shield with whenever any player draws a card, deal 8 damage to your opponent. And with Ob Obnixilis, he at level 60, he will cost 79,920 mana runes. And his mana bonuses are really, really weak. And they are 0 to white, plus 1 to blue, plus 3 to black plus one to red, and then zero to green. Up next, we have Teferi, Master of Time. 
and I have him down at level 46 because something that you will find with a lot of these monocolor walkers is that level 46 is where their third ability becomes level 3. And at level 46, he will have a health of 93. And all three of his abilities will be level 3, just like I was saying, so let's go take a look at them. Alright, first ability at level 3 is discard the last card without mana from your hand, then draw two cards. Create a Winds of Fate token with two shield with prowess. Your first creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until end of turn. His second ability will be disable target creature until the beginning of your next turn. If it's an opposing creature, create a copy of it on the battlefield under your control. Very nice ability. And then the third at level three is create a Master of Time token with a 3 shield count with when you make your first match during your turn gain an extra swap. Resourceful 2 the first non-creature card in your hand gains 2 mana. Also draw 2 cards. And at level 46 he will cost 37,075 mana runes to get him there. And his mana bonuses are plus 3 to white plus four to blue, plus three to black, and then minus one to red, and minus three to green. Up next, we have Vivian Reed, also known as Vivian One. She is my favorite Vivian, as well as probably the second best mono green walker for newer players. And the reason is her abilities can do everything. Her first ability will be Creature Fetch. Her second ability can destroy enchantments. And her third ability is her third ability will give your creatures prevent damage. So if you use that to your advantage, you can you can kill their creatures with your creatures and you don't need as much removal in your deck. So I have her down at level 46. Her health will be 93. And all three of her abilities will be level 3. Let's go take a look at them. We have her first ability at level 3 is pick one of the first three land or creature cards from your library. Fetch that card and give it half of its mana. So creature fetch. Second ability at level 3. Destroy target creature with flying. If you can't destroy an, opposing's, an opponent's enchantment. If you can't destroy an opponent's artifact. Like I said, she can do destroy supports. And level 3, her third ability, all your creatures get plus 6, plus 6, prevent damage, and trample. So, with that being said, giving your creatures prevent damage, and then you have a creature that has Berserker, or even flying on top of that, that's a little harder to do to find in, in green right now in standard. But, if you can find a way to get your creatures to attack their creatures or to defend them with Defender, then you can just wipe the board out with that alone. And that's why I think she is the strongest mono green walker for newer players and their small collection sizes. And with Vivian Reed, her mana bonuses are plus two to white, plus two to blue, minus one to black, minus two to red and plus five to green and finally uh the last planeswalker on the monocolor tier list i have vivian arcbow ranger which is vivian two and i have her down at best level to play at level 40. her health will be 89 and her abilities will be the first one is level 3. If we go take a look at that. Level 3, your first and last creature gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains trample. The second ability at level 3 is an opposing vanguard sport loses X shield, where X is your first creature's power plus 3. If you can't, deal X damage to target opposing creature. And then the last ability is only going to be level 2. Return the first two creatures from your exile to your hand. Those cards gained full mana. 
And at level 40, she will cost 28,325. And her mana bonuses are plus one to white, minus three to blue. She hits zero on black, plus three to red, and plus four to green. That's all I have for the mono walkers in this video. I really hope that this helps a lot of newer players out or even any type of veteran player who is who have walkers that, that they don't use and they want to level them up just a little bit. I will there's gonna be three different videos. This is the first one. I'm also gonna do one on dual colors and tri colors as well. And I'm going to make this public, and it will be shareable with everybody. Everybody will be able to have access to this. I will most likely also put it on the forums for everybody to see as well. And if you like all of my content that I have been putting out, please like and subscribe. I've been having a lot of fun doing all these videos, and I appreciate all the feedback that you guys have been giving me. It's been a lot of fun. So stay tuned for part two, which will be the dual color walkers.